so we will begin study from verse number 54 so far we in the second chapter uh, it began with further doubts of arjuna that was the beginning first 10 verses was arjuna's further doubt and surrender so arjuna gave several reasons in first chapter he doesn't want to fight his own relatives because they are all you know he doesn't want to see them killed through the fight you know whether he will be die he will die or his relatives would die so he doesn't want to see that so he doesn't want to kill the relatives that was the first reason he gave why he doesn't want to fight second reason he gave is if i kill all of them who will be there for me to enjoy with i don't have my relatives so there is no really there is no enjoyment in doing this fight because why would i be happy uh, on the laurels of my the death of my relatives instead i would go to forest and do begging uh, i am a kshatriya i should be ruling but duryodhana would not allow us so i would rather go and beg so he gave there is no enjoyment that was the second reason he gave then third reason he gave is fear of sinful reactions by killing my own relatives i will get sinful reactions that was his understanding and then he gave also further gave reasons like uh, the religious principles will will be will be gone because uh, the men will die in this fight and women will be left and unscrupulous men would try to break the chastity of women and unwanted children would be born and the society would be in a disarray there will be nobody who will be doing uh, pinda for our forefathers because the society is all degraded and then finally he is indecisive he doesn't know what is right what is wrong so with all that he he was confused totally and he finally said krishna only you can clear my doubt i will accept you as my spiritual master and i would hear from you whatever you say i will follow you so krishna would laugh at arjuna because a friend turned into a student then he would break or he would answer each of his reasons so the first reason arjuna gives sorry was that you are not this body you are a soul the point was my relative is killed krishna counters by saying you are considering only from body perspective but you are but you are not uh, understanding that they are souls in the inevitable in, inevitable discharge of your duty if they get killed there is no uh, no there is no real death to the body and it is out of duty you are doing that so there is no sinful reaction for it and then he countered his lack of enjoyment he said krishna said if you kill your relatives if you don't fight in this battle as a kshatriya you are not following the principles of protecting and holding the dharma so you would you would actually incur sin sin by not performing your duties that was the reason krishna gives so first krishna talks in verses from uh, about uh, 12th to about 13 he would talk about the soul and characteristics of the soul then he talks about karma kanda to counter arjuna's reasoning that there is no enjoyment in this fighting by saying actually you would you will not enjoy if you don't fight because you are not performing your duty one who does not perform his duty he would get sinful so uh, he you will you will lose enjoyment actually by not fighting and then thirdly he gives he explains about so that is karma kanda section so he talks about soul that is about 30 verses 20 20 verses and then he talks about karma kanda and then he talks about karma yoga sakam uh, sorry karma karma yoga the last few verses were about that nishkama karma yogi is one who performs duty without attachment to the fruits fruits means when you perform a duty you would get some results 
which could be uh, enjoyable. Uh, one who does not bother about the fruits of the action, just on duty out of duty. Duty you know, performs his work. It doesn't bother about whether the result will be good or bad. Such a person is a nishkama karma yogi. Uh, so Krishna talks about that and encourages Arjuna to be a nishkama karma yogi. So Arjuna, after hearing, so suddenly Krishna talked about transcendence, transcendental aspect, spiritual aspect in the last few verses. Uh, so Arjuna wanted to understand, is this relevant for me? Uh, Krishna is talking about, Krishna is talking about subject, I'm a fighter and Krishna is talking about Nishkama Karma. Is this something that is relevant to me? What is this about? I want to more understand more about this transcendental aspect of this yogi. So with that in mind, Arjuna would ask certain questions now. Let's see. Arjuna Uvacha Sita Pragnasya Kabhasha Modi Shava Sita Kim Prabhasita Masita Vrajeta Kim. Arjuna said, Oh Krishna, what are the symptoms of one whose consciousness is transcendental? How does he speak? What is his language? How does he sit? And how does he walk? These are the four questions Arjuna puts. So you know, talking about a sthita prajna, a person whose consciousness is totally transcendental, spiritual, his mind, his you know, his his existence is totally spiritual. For such a person, how does he speak? When you say how does he speak, uh, it's basically how does uh, you know how does he respond to things in, that come to him? You know how does he respond? So that is how does he speak? What is his language? How does he conduct himself? How does he sit? How does he sit means? Then your senses are not engaged. How does, how do you, um, uh, how do you control yourself? And how does he walk? When, when you live in this world, there are so many uh, forces that come upon us from outside world. So how do you, control your mind in those cases. So th this is basically how do you conduct yourself when you face externals? And how do you, you know, internally keep yourself? When, when your senses are not agitated, how do you uh, control yourself? That is this. So these are various aspects of a, symptoms of a sthita pragna. Sthita pragna means one whose mind is fixed in transcendence or spiritual life fully one who is you know advanced spiritually how does he what are his characteristics how does he control his mind um, how does he conduct himself so these are I mean, these are literal questions but that's what it means so as there are symptoms for each and every man in terms of his particular situation similarly one who is krishna conscious has his particular nature, talking, walking, thinking, feeling. As a man has his symptoms by which he is known as a rich man, as a deceased man has his symptoms by which he is known as deceased, or a learned man has his symptoms, so a man in transcendental consciousness of Krishna has specific symptoms in various dealings. One can know his specific symptoms from the Bhagavad Gita. Most important is how the man in Krishna consciousness speaks, for speech is the most important quality of a man. He said that a fool is undiscovered as long as he does not speak, and certainly a well dressed fool cannot be identified unless he speaks. But as, he, as soon as he speaks, he does it at once. The immediate symptom of a Krishna conscious man is that he speaks only of Krishna and is related to him. Other symptoms that automatically follow as stated below. 
So Arjuna puts these questions. Now Krishna would answer. What is the main characteristic? He would answer each question in each one. In the next few verses. Uh, let's see Krishna's answers. So first he would answer. What are the characteristics of a person? Who is a sthita whose mind is fully spiritual? Or whose existence is fully spiritual? Mind is again physical. Krishna would start answering Sri Bhagavan Vacha Prajahati Yadakaman Sarvan Pardhamano Gatan Atmani Eva Atmana Tushta Stita Pragnascha Stita Pragnas Tados Chate Tados Chate The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Sri Bhagavan Vacha, O Partha, Arjuna, when a man gives up all varieties of desire for sense gratification, which arise from mental concoction, and when his mind, thus purified, finds satisfaction in the self alone, then he is said to be in pure transcendental consciousness. So this is very advanced concept here. Let's understand in depth. When a man gives up, let me read again. When, when a man gives up all varieties of desire for sense gratification, which arise from mental concoction, and when his mind thus purified, finds satisfaction in the self alone. Atmani evatmana tusta, tusta means satisfaction. Then he is said to be in pure transcendental consciousness. Tita pragnas tadoschate. Yeah, pragna prajahati yadat kama means one who gives up all varieties of desire for sense gratification. How does this work? So we all know we have multi level existence. One is the core self is the soul covered immediately by the subtle body mind intelligence and ego and then finally covered by the gross physical body physical body has the senses eyes nose tongue skin these are all the senses now when uh, um, so when when the so the jiva is always filled with a lot of desires in this world. It wants to eat nice things. It wants to uh, touch the softest things, see the most beautiful things, eat the most tastiest food. So like this, all this this the. The jiva is always focused on sense objects externally. Hmm? So it tries to fulfill its various desires in this process. It will try to enjoy in this world through its senses. So in this, what, what is happening at this point, the, the jiva has a lot of material desires which are all part of his mind. Where are these desires coming from? They are all coming from his mind. Both uh, likes and things that we don't like. Both of them are coming from our own mind. So for example, when I see Rasgulla, for example, I like Rasgulla, uh, I like to eat Rasgulla, for example, right? I have a past experience of eating Rasgulla and I know that it tastes very nice. So as soon as I see it with my eyes, my mouth starts watering. The reason is, I have a past experience in my mind. And so whenever I see that object, sense object, my, my tongue starts watering. Means it the desire kicks in to, to take that and eat it. So that's how uh, our desires get fulfilled in this world. So the soul is the source of our life. The consciousness flows outward from the soul. The mind 
uh, I would say subtle body, I would, uh, for simplicity, we would call it as mind. There is mind, intelligence, and ego, three things. The mind is the soul is the root of the consciousness, R O O T root. Mind is the route, R O U T route, through which this consciousness flows. And, and it flows outward through our senses towards the sense objects. As soon as uh, you know, we see objects for our gratification, that we have you know, good experience, we want to accept it and enjoy. And if things are not of our desire, you know, based on our past experience, we didn't have a good experience with a certain sense object. And we just, you know, we, we, we want to avoid it. We don't want to turn towards that. So this is what mind is doing. Sankalpa, Vikalpa is uh, liking and disliking. This is what mind always keeps switching between. You know? So that's how, that's how mind works. Hmm? We have, when we, so Krishna says here, so this is exactly how any, uh, this is, what, what is the difference between a materialist and a spiritualist? Materialist is one who tries to gratify his, you know, who tries to enjoy himself through external objects. And spiritualist is one who is turned inward and tries to enjoy within. That's the main difference. What is the main difference? Uh, one is outward in his gratification. The other is inward in his gratification. Both are enjoying. But the, the way they enjoy is different. Is that making, is that making sense? The difference between spiritualist and materialist. Should be, yeah. Now, because the materialist finds only satisfaction only in the external objects, right? So his, his satisfaction is only found in external objects. He doesn't know anything more about his own inner happiness that he can achieve within himself. That is the problem there. Otherwise, the inner happiness is far, far more superior than external happiness. But because materialist does not have idea, doesn't have an understanding, is ignorant of the, the happiness within. So he is actually only turned outward. And everybody is like that. Most of the jivas are like that. 99.99% of all the living entities in this world are like that. Whether it is a human or an animal, everybody is actually trying to gratify his senses in this world. That is the only, from the time they wake up till the time they sleep again. Again, in the dreams also they try to enjoy. So it's just the constant process that's going on to gratify. Because the soul's nature is to be happy. The core of our self is Ananda Bhyasat. Ananda Bhyasat means the nature of the soul is blissful, to always be blissful. But because he is covered in this middle world, he is trying to seek that happiness through the sense objects externally. But when he turns inward, when he turns inward, he can experience higher satisfaction. He can find satisfaction in self alone. So when he advances to this level, he is considered to be in pure transcendental consciousness. So now just to understand a little more about this. So where are all these desires coming from? They're all within the mind only. Everything, you know, everything is a, based on your past experience, or, uh, you know, somebody told about, oh, this is nice, this place is nice to go. Uh, and then even if you don't go, if you haven't gone before, you develop a desire to enjoy that aspect, right? So, what is the main difference between a spiritualist and materialist? Uh, the spiritualist turns inward. It doesn't mean that he 
uh, no he doesn't go anywhere he's like you know totally you know doesn't eat anything nice doesn't smell anything nice no it is not like that it is not a dry rejection of the material okay that is the most important aspect so he develops a higher taste through which he is able to give up the lower taste it's never by force it never works by force so i don't want i completely want to avoid this it doesn't work like that because the craving is such a strong thing even if you give up by force anything that you want to give up it it wouldn't stay for very long if you do it out of force you should naturally develop a higher taste means it you no know, you should naturally feel something a alternative a positive alternative that's exactly how spirituality works do not think that oh, i would give up this and i would be happy no it doesn't work like that if you have certain things that you know you are gratifying in this world through you know through material sense gratification you cannot just give up it doesn't work like that you have to slowly translate that into a spiritual uh, you know gratification as you don't know spiritually naturally you you will give up just like a child when a, when you are a child you are playing with a lot of toys right now you don't play with them because you have a higher taste you may play tennis or shuttle badminton you don't play with small toys anymore because you have a higher taste right similarly as we develop spiritually through the process of chanting studying bhagavad gita associating with uh, you know good like minded spiritually developed people we develop higher taste then we transform everything into spiritual slowly step by step over the many years it will happen and when we do that then we give up lower taste we may not desire to watch you know nonsense movies or soap operas or news or all this nonsense that goes around in this world which only contaminates the mind hmm? so that's how it works so krishna is just defining here what is that aspect um will further understand okay this makes it clear right um the highly developed soul always remains satisfied in himself by realizing himself as the eternal servitor of the supreme lord such a transcendental situates transcendentally situated person has no sense desires resulting from petty materialism rather he remains always happy in his natural position of eternally serving the supreme lord so when he understands that he has a higher relationship with lord which is unaware till now he was ignorant but when he realizes suppose there is an orphan you know he was living in an orphan orphanage eating some you know basic living with some basic necessities eating simple food but suddenly one day a person came and tells him hey you are not a simple orphan who doesn't have anybody your father is billionaire he is actually considered one of the richest man in the country and he is actually looking for you you who is a lost son he has been so unhappy for so long because he is missing you if somebody tells to an orphan like that how would the orphan feel you know orphan would you know the orphan would be most happy with that with that message isn't it because he is he has a he didn't realize that he had such a great connection similarly when our life in our life when we understand when we understand that our true father is the supreme lord god who is krishna himself and he is supremely powerful supremely blissful and supremely lovable lovable when we understand all these aspects of lord and he is eager to take us back to his uh, his place his vaikuntha huh? he he doesn't want us to toil in this material world when we understand these aspects and start slowly developing spiritually connecting with him 
on a daily basis progressing spiritually you know, through the sadhana then we our lower taste would go down drastically over a period of time so that's how it works it doesn't work by just simply rejection of material by connection with the spiritual it would work dukkheswa anuvignamana sukheshu vigata spriha idaraga bhaya krodha sthitadhir muni ruchyate one who is not disturbed in mind even amidst the threefold miseries are elated when there is happiness and who is free from the attachment fear and anger is called a sage of steady mind this is another powerful verse right vita raga bhay krodha vita vita means being free raga means attachment bhaya means fear krodha means anger attachment fear anger three aspects that always run around in the minds of all people in this world isn't it so a person who is not disturbed in his mind so the whole process of yoga is to control our mind even amidst the threefold miseries what are the threefold miseries adi bhautika adhyatmika and adi daivika three types of miseries everybody goes to what is adi bhautika miseries miseries caused by external nature adi bhautika isn't it in the in the you know there will be right now what is the adi bhautika klesha that we have corona right nature has provided with corona there is tsunamis earthquakes where cities would be wiped out or in the california now there is wildfires almost spreaded over i heard like millions of hectares you know? millions of acres never before it's the worst season of for fire accident uh, this year adi bhautika we cannot control them actually nature is so powerful and uh, you know when earthquake comes we all we can do is to run away from the place right we can detect and run away we can't stop it <laughs> isn't it um, take any example i mean tsunamis or corona for example right it's almost uh, nine months no solution yet every country was panicking the economy is downturn completely nature is extremely powerful we cannot uh, you know we cannot so the other day my friend was saying uh he was telling me oh yeah actually i was thinking you know we are such a lucky generation there is no world war uh you know there is no freedom struggle uh, our life is all easy and there is economic boom and all positive technological developments are happening in the world i considered myself very very lucky until corona came <laughs> corona actually turned everything upside down Lo- lots of people lost jobs um, so much misery in the world right now so many people are psychologically sick because of that huh? so so nature is all powerful because it is daivihi esha gunamai it uh, it is the energy of lord it is extremely powerful why would nature present such miseries just to remind this world is a temporary miserable place keeps on coming it's there is no end to it when as long as you are in this metal world there will be miseries this is adi bhautika adhyatmika atmika means from inside us we have problems coming from our own body and mind mentally we can get sick because of torture of people around or headache or you know so many things 
yeah sorry actually adi uh, whatever i mentioned in the before was adi daivika adi daivik means natural nature around us causing the miseries adhyatmika means from inside and then adi bhautika means things that are external to us things that are external to us like it could be your you know in laws it could be your boss it could be your your own husband or your own wife or your own kids or mosquitoes or you know so many things that can cause adi bhautika so there are so many ways one can get miserable in this world isn't it and it is so easy to get into trouble in this world eh? suppose uh, you know uh, i'm just giving a simple example suppose you know president trump trumps again wins election and he is walking to the podium suddenly he stepped on a nail you know nail it pierces into his feet ah he gets such a pain even though he was about to be swan the immediate pain takes away all the pressure of his right isn't it that's how this world works it's so easy to run into trouble hmm? so there is always misery in this world but a sthita uh, a sthita dhir muni or sthita prajna the person who is um, a sage of steady mind he is not disturbed a little bit also in the amidst of all these miseries he is not too elated by happiness also he is neither too happy nor too you know dis- disturbed by miseries of this world he is free from attachment why is this happening because he is not attached to anything material he is always he always stays detached he doesn't identify himself with the body he understands he is not this body i am not this body anything that happens to this body everything that happens in this world is mainly to the body you know you lose your job or whatever it is ultimately to the body it's not to the soul so one who distances himself sees himself separate from his body you know to such a person there are no threefold miseries so he doesn't experience too much uh, miseries not too much happiness he doesn't want to experience so he because of his how is he able to do that because he is not turned outward his consciousness is not rooting rooted out through his mind to outward he it is instead turned inward towards god there is parmatma within now he would turn towards that that super soul aspect of himself so when that happens he is not disturbed because he has a shelter there he 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 finds his strength there his support there his support system is inward isn't it so he is not he is not attached to anything external so he is naturally not fearful you know he is always under the shelter of god so for one how can one be fearless in this world fearlessness comes only in the association of one who dwarfs the fear dwarf means reduce you see my point uh, this is a very important point in this world do you think you become fearless by having say 5 million dollars in your bank account no any day it can go away stock market would crash everything would run into you know dirt so nothing material can even the jeff bezos is such a rich person i don't think he will be fearless any day he is worried that his company would collapse because there is such a competition nowadays you don't know what would come in the next few years and that would dwarf all the existing uh, top technologies companies like facebook or whatever fear is always there fear of you know competition fear of in this this world is a place of fear the only way one can be fearless is one who finds the shelter in one who is who can dwarf the fear who is you know who is uh, you know the strong support 
for example if a child were to cross the signals on the road he would be so fearful if he has to do alone but if he holds the hand of his father will he be fearful he will not be right because he knows in in uh, when when i am holding the hand of my father or mother i am fully taken care and I, i would be i can be you know rest assured i can be fearless completely fearless even if the car comes he would look at it and will not uh, will not budge a little bit also because he knows that he is holding the hand of his father and his father would protect him he is not worried but if we were to be alone in that spot he would be so fearful so fear fearlessness comes by our association with one who dwarfs the fear right and anger anger comes out of frustration of our attachments we have certain expectations in this world you know uh, from others or from our own self and so when when our expectations are not met we would be angry with our friends whoever it is doesn't matter so these expectations would go down uh, when you become spiritual so one who conquers these three things attachment fear anger through his connection spiritually such a person is a man of steady mind or a sage of steady mind sthitadhur muni you can read this it's a big purport so let me read this one line powerful line he is called prashanta nihesa manoratantara stotra pamala forty third verse or one who has surpassed the stage of mental speculations and has come to the conclusion that lord krishna or vasudeva is everything vasudeva sarvamiti samahatma sudurlabha it will come in the future work, future chapter one who comes to the conclusion after trying various even in the spiritual dimension many people keep trying so many paths but one krishna says one who comes to the conclusion ultimately that vasudeva sarvamiti samahatma sudurlabah one who concludes that myself or lord krishna is everything one who comes to that conclusion he has come to final conclusion yeah so uh, yeah the other important aspect uh, such a god conscious person is not at all disturbed by the onslaughts of the threefold miseries for he accepts all miseries as the mercy of the lord thinking himself only worth of more trouble due to his past misdeeds so whenever we whenever we go through miseries in our life do not think that god is unkind to us or you know somebody is the reason for our miseries no it's never like that everybody is just an instrument who is the reason for our own misery for our misery anybody when you are going through a rough patch of life who do you think is the reason for that our self our our past karma and desires yes is basically contributed by our own past karma or sanchit karma is the reason for our current happiness or misery no other reason so but because we are trying to be spiritual through chanting to studying of bhagavad gita and all these aspects actually god is reducing that misery we should understand for example if you are if you fall down and hit uh, you know, get a uh, get a, uh, some injury understand that you would have actually had a broken leg instead of that god has only given this much you know because you have turned to him he would reduce the miseries the the quota of misery that you are supposed to actually receive 
will be actually reduced, minimized. Yeah. So he says, you know, that is that is how a spiritualist thinks. Do not think because you have now turned to spiritual life, uh, all the miseries would you know just vanish. Definitely they would reduce, as we as we you know discussed. Uh, one of the first benefit of chanting the holy name is klesha agni. Klesha agni means klesha means misery. Agni means the klesha that miseries of the material world would drastically reduce, like a fire and water. You know what water on fire. Klesha agni means the miseries of the material world would be reduced. So Prabhu, I have a question here. So we are talking of uh, detachment. I understand we are talking of detachment from uh, the material things, but uh, how, what about like detachment from like our kids, our parents? I mean, that can, that is really, really difficult. You cannot get detached with that love or affection from the parents or the kid. How do we overcome that when some kind of like trouble comes on them? Oh, actually, um, we should understand what is attachment, first of all. The, so we should, be, uh, we should be taking care of our parents or kids very well. You know, that is our responsibility. And in that, in that exchange, there should be love also with our parents, with our, uh, with our kids. That is our responsibility to lovingly nourish them, raise them very well with love and affection. This attachment is that I'm talking about is like, hey, he's my child, so he must get into MIT. That is an attachment. You see the difference? Uh, okay, yes, yes. So many have misunderstanding of spirituality and you know what is actually wrong, what is right. So I think this is a very important question you asked to care for them, to raise them nicely with values and you know, to show them love and affection. You should give so much love and affection that once they leave you know, to go out to job or you know, to go to college or to go up, you know, to marriage, leave your family, whatever, that cherished woman should remain in their heart forever, that they never deviate uh, you know, turn to a bad association or so that is how we should strengthen while they are with us through our love and affection. So in fact, we should give more love and affection. Spirituality doesn't preclude love. The attachment, we should serve if possible, you know, how much ever we can serve, we should serve our parents, you know, physically, financially, or emotionally, talk to them regularly. So we should support everyone with love and affection. There is, spirituality doesn't preclude that. Spiritual precludes the materialistic aspects of our, you know, relationship with our kids. You know, we have certain expectations of them, or you know, we want because we have certain, those desires. Actually, I wanted to study in MIT. I couldn't study, so I let my child study. He must get the number one rank. Uh, so these are all material aspects. You see the difference. So those yeah. are strong attachments. Hmm? My, my father didn't give me anything or uh, you know complaining or uh, oh, things like that so those are the things to avoid okay got it thank you brother okay so Yeah, actually such a spiritual person, how does he think in the face of a miseries, right? He thinks himself actually only worthy of more trouble due to his past mistakes. Actually, he would have deserved more. He, he deserves more, but God, by God's grace, he got only little. That's how he thinks. He never complains. Oh God, I'm serving you so much. Why are you actually troubling me? This is a very high aspect. It's not easy actually. Even I am not there yet. And he sees that his miseries, by the grace of Lord, are minimized to the lowest. 
uh, in fact i heard the story of mirabai mirabai towards you know when she is very old she got a boil on his on her leg or something it was so painful for her but she would never you know never ever complain that you know the boil is causing her pain in fact uh, she would think that you know it is a minimal suffering that god uh, you know krishna has his lover krishna has given to her she would deserve much more and why would anything if my if if krishna is my father why would he give anything that is not good for me isn't it so everything is a lesson it if sometimes father slaps the child is that because father doesn't love the child no he loves the child so much he doesn't want him to be spoiled that's why he gets he gets a slap similarly every misery that we get in our life is a slap arranged by lot for our own improvement we may not see right now the dots would connect later but there is no other reason beyond that everything is for our own good every experience that we get we just need proper vision to see that we can see many times we can see the the you know the the most lowest point of our life were filled with so many lessons for us if you go back in life and see at that time of course you can't really see that because it's such a miserable state of mind that you are in uh, but every failure in our life actually failures teach the most isn't it uh, everybody understands that every miserable uh, situation of our life was the biggest lesson biggest transformer how would our ego go down otherwise how would our, how would we purify ourselves you know unless, even though you are practicing spirituality it's not easy to cut down your ego unless you go through you know some kind of miseries in your life so everything is in arrangement you can you can take it that way that an arrangement to improve my improve me spiritually strengthen me spiritually okay he realizes that due to the lord's grace that he is in such a comfortable condition when he uh, no uh, yeah, oh, sorry yeah. similarly when he is happy he gives credit to the lord thinking himself unworthy of that happiness he realizes that it is due to only lord's grace that he is in such a comfortable condition and be able to render better service to the lord why would he give me why would i be put in a good condition so that i can do better service to the lord that is the only reason uh, that's how a, a spiritually minded person says he doesn't think oh i deserve i deserve to be the number one i deserve the promotion i deserve Uh, to be treated nicely i deserve this i do no he never thinks like that he thinks he was he doesn't deserve, deserve this but only by god's grace was he given such a better um, better state of life uh, so uh, there was there was this great tennis champion sir arthur i think Arthur, right? Anybody knows his name? Arthur, who is the number one uh, a few decades ago. Uh, anyway, I I don't recollect. So this personality, he was number one for a, almost many many years in the in the world. He he is from America. Um. So at one point. Uh, when he was you know in 40s he gets cancer 40s or 50s i don't remember he gets cancer almost at the verge of death so one reporter asks him are there why in the world this stupid cancer only has to come to you why not any arthur ash yes arthur ash yeah arthur ash yeah so why not this disease come to anybody else why only to you is asked by that uh, you know reporter then arthur ash would say you know how many people play in a uh, you know uh, in a 
how much it takes to become a number one in tennis there are so many cities each city has a you know tennis club and one has to be best in that then from city level he has to go to county level from county level he has to go to state level from state level he has to go to uh, country level from country level one has to go to international player and in the international there is so much competition to be number one takes such a strike of luck i mean so many people work hard i never asked why it is only me that you know why i only become the number one i never asked so today i don't have the right to ask why only me get the can this cancer isn't it is isn't that logical yeah yeah so the point is right well, when we get happiness when we get or when we get misery right we you know especially when you get happiness a spiritualist understands that he doesn't deserve that and anything that is provisioned like that uh, is primarily to serve lord better that's how he thinks even for example in india we all know even here also um a, you know if as soon as somebody becomes an ias officer he will be given an assistant and a driver and a, you know and a car so many facilities are given by the government everywhere he goes there is so much respect uh you know everybody here seen why such facilities are given the reason is so that he can deliver his duties in a very responsible way he is he is handling respons- responsibilities at a higher level so lower his low, lower uh, needs are easily what do you say uh, easily met by the government so that he can he can focus more on he doesn't need to worry about buying vegetables or cleaning his home or many things are you know just taken care by the government so that he can focus on higher things so similarly when we get happiness understand that this this comfortable position is arranged by lord so that i can perform a better service to him so that is the right way to under, to uh, to see that situation and for that service of the lord he is always daring and active and is not influenced by attachment or aversion see here mataji swetha mataji your question attachment means accepting things things for one's own sense gratification hmm yeah we we express attachment when we feel you know when we think of our own enjoyment okay yes detachment is absence of sense sensual attachment yeah in any dealing where there is no consideration of my happiness my gratification that is detachment okay yeah one but one fixed in krishna consciousness has neither attachment nor detachment because his life is dedicated in the service of lord so now when you see your child as you know child of god i have to raise them nicely there is no attachment there because your your consideration is you know their connection with god not your happiness and as you execute your duties in the proper consciousness spiritual consciousness there is there is nothing like a failure every attempt is a success hmm? so that's how it is it doesn't matter whether you succeed materially or not let's read quickly here yah sarvatran sarvatran abhi ni nabhi nishehas tat tat prapya subha shubham 
नाभिनंदाति प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता इन द मेटेरियल वर्ल्ड वन हू इज अनफेक्टेड बाई वॉट एवर गुड और एवल ही मे अपन नहीं प्राइजिंग इट नॉट डिस्पाइजिंग इट इज फॉर्मली फिक्सड इन परफेक्ट नॉलेज He is not disturbed. Sometimes he gets good. Sometimes he gets evil. Nothing is going to be one way all the time. Everybody, everybody has to go through both good results and bad results. So, in this journey, if you do not get attached to either, neither praising it nor despising it, disliking it, but being fixed perfectly. and the knowledge that you know i am i'm i'm you know my father is krishna and my my ultimate duty is to serve him and go back to him that is my that if that is the one goal always in your mind then you know then you are really unaffected by good or evil things you will be taken care the most difficult things you would You would be able to come up. There is no nothing too bad in the, nothing too bad that you cannot face in this world. Everything is happening according to, uh, you know, our own karma and you know, others' karma. Accept things as they are. Do not fear in this world. Accept everything as the mercy of God, teaching you some lesson. Then. your life would be in a steady mind i mean basically your mind is always steady you are you do not praise or despise steady life so what was says here there is always some upheaval in the material world which may be good or evil one who is not agitated by such material upheavals who is unaffected by good and evil is to be understood to be fixed in krishna consciousness as long as one is in the material world there is always the possibility of good and evil because this world is full of duality one year you would get nice results your manager would be happy another year he will not be happy and you lose lot of money all of us have gone through you know dualities of life isn't it but one who is fixed in krishna consciousness he is not affected by good and evil because he is simply concerned with krishna his idea is always turned spiritually turned inward okay so he is he is having the shelter you know so uh, who is all good absolute right such consciousness is in krishna situates one in a perfect transcendental position called samadhi that is exactly samadhi samadhi means your consciousness is turned inward me it's not like uh, you always have in your mind uh, you know like a picture of krishna it's like that seeing everything with samadrishti samadrishti means equal vision things events and people these are the three things right things means like you know seeing things evenly means whether it is a pebble or gold whether it is a rock or gold or diamond doesn't matter a do a spiritualist sees it not from his own gratification perspective anything he sees either a pebble or a gold can be used in the service of god that's how he sees things he sees everything can be used in the service of god okay so things he has even even mindedness towards that things events events means like what we discuss now sometimes things happen positively in your life sometimes negatively it's all influence of your karma so he is not disturbed he thinks that everything is a good lesson for me everything is a good lesson for me there is there must be some lesson otherwise why would my father give this you know this situation in my life so i should be study mind 
I just take shelter of God, be patient, everything will be over. It's not going to be permanent. My troubles are not going to be permanent. It's just part of life. It too will pass away. Okay, that's what he says. So events, either too good or too bad, he, if it is too good, he thinks that it, you know, he really doesn't deserve. It is by the grace of God he got this. If it is too bad, he thinks that you know he deserves more. But God has actually reduced that. Events, things and events. So he has a samadrishti towards both of them. And also people. Some people would be scolding you. Some people will be praising you. No? There will be always all types of people. So a person with samadrishti, he is not disturbed. He is going to have equal vision to, towards everyone. Everybody is an instrument in giving us our own karma. So we don't take it negatively or positively. Okay? So we spend an hour at this point. We will read further verses. This is another powerful verse. Next few verses are very powerful. We will we'll continue from next week. Any questions? From 58 onwards. Today is a very powerful lesson. All the lessons going forward would be like that. Very lot of spiritual lessons. You can keep hearing, you know, um, repeatedly the recording also that would help if you have time. Any questions? Is everything clear or nothing is clear? So Prabhu, uh, for the spiritual body or uh, spiritual person, person with who has a spiritual body does not he does not have any desire or he has a desire. How does the desire? If desire comes from mind, mm -hmm. then it goes in the subtle body, right, Prabhu? So yeah, spiritually, spiritual in the spiritual body, one has spiritual mind. So, the jiva would always have desire. Desireless, desirelessness is meaningless. The soul is active. It, it is, it it has to engage itself, and so because it deserves engagement, it always will have desires, whether it is in the spiritual world and the or in the material world. In the spiritual world, it is the desires to serve the Lord. Even in the material world. The sthita pragnas would be fixed in their mind in Krishna consciousness or God consciousness. They would always be thinking of God. So, so it is like that. So, of course, right now our material desires are part of our material mind. But when we fully spiritualize ourselves, when our mind is filled with spiritual life, completely spirituality. Uh -huh. It's like sun, right? When there is sun, there is no question of darkness. Suppose there is a full of darkness in the night. As soon as sun comes, everything is lighted up. The world is fully lighted up, isn't it? Yes. So similarly, when Krishna enters, the light of Krishna enters our mind. So our mind is fully lighted up. As And, and when there is Krishna, there is no question of darkness in our mind. So even in this material world, our material mind would be filled with full of spiritual aspects. And at that point, it is as good as a spiritual body because mind is filled with Krishna consciousness fully. So Prabhu, one more question on attachment. Uh, attachment right now we are talking about is more uh, focusing on the material senses and focusing on you me and sense objects mm. uh, now you also explained that spiritual person will have inward attachment mm. so when we say inward attachment uh, so what is the difference between material and spiritual attachment or uh, is a attachment to krishna is a detachment or how uh, i'm just trying to yeah okay understand the differences mm. a spiritualist would not practice detachment, especially in Bhakti Yoga. There is no question of practicing detachment. Now he is attached to material things, like he wants to enjoy, gratify his senses, 
that's what his focus is his consciousness is focused on so that would turn into turn into krishna consciousness meaning he would consider satisfying god as the primary goal okay uh-huh. for example um earlier he was cooking nice foods that he wants to eat okay now to spiritualize that is to begin with is to cook the same foods that he likes to eat but for the thinking only for the about the pleasure of god you cook nicely but before you even touch or uh, eat it you actually offer it to god first god you are the enjoyer now after you know uh, offering to god he would take that bhoga uh, you know that offering prasadam now he eats the prasadam the same thing so he practices attachment to god i would say so he does not give, have to give up any of his activities actually he has to just spiritualize all aspects of his life he doesn't need to stop eating he doesn't need to uh, you know basically he can continue his job everything is normal you know is just normalized by uh, you know by keeping krishna in the center of life in every aspect yes sir thank you all we practice attachment to krishna we don't practice detachment from material things that yeah. that's not that's not practical yes exactly how But many yogis yogis are people who follow detachment the- Yeah. meditation process in terms of ashtanga yoga mm. they may have taken the detachment from a withdrawing their her attention to the sense object or something like that right? that's, how, that's how ashtanga yoga works you have to practice detachment from material aspects right the process is very tough yeah so that is a separate thing than this right? so level of the disturbs this yes this it's you know it's very tough for the conditioned soul conditioned soul has so many attachments he has so many desires now how can he stop all of those desires and suddenly give them up and he may give up for a year two years three years maybe again his desires come back it's not easy yeah. yes correct detachment we have a lot of examples on that right we have saubhari muni and many such examples amitra yeah vishwamitra yeah i have a okay shivam any other questions thank you prabhu is everything clear aranya mata ji hari krishna prabhu ji i had a question so you mentioned about developing the higher taste right like but how do you like spiritually i mean we are all like practicing and doing chanting on all that but how do you develop that higher taste for like god conscious or spirituality essentially right so that like everything else like wouldn't matter so much than your spiritual practice correct so it happens you know one one primary reason it develops is through the association of a devotees who are advanced than us that one main way of developing uh our own uh, spirituality second is sadhana where you you know right now you are all doing swadhyaya swadhyaya means studying scriptures that, that is one important aspect of spirituality and that will give the understanding then that will you know purify your intelligence then you are also recommended to do one round of chanting at home one or more so that that would purify your mind so each of these touch various aspects now slowly in the future we'll also discuss about offering bhoga to god and eating prasadam so mm-hmm. or that purify you so all these aspects slowly over a period of time will take effect in your heart mm-hmm. main main thing is chanting chanting is the most important aspect 90% of our 99% actually of our progress depends on effective chanting of the holy name mm. that is the process recommended for this is so chanting satsang like we are doing now and eating prasadam 
reading scriptures like we are doing now. So all these are all important aspects. So slowly and slowly, steadily it will develop over a period of time. It will happen. It happened to a person like me. So definitely it will happen to everyone. Uh, I can see in myself what a change in my way outlook has changed. My outlook has changed towards life and everything in general. Prabhuji, we put prasadam like every day, just something and then, you know, but I don't, I don't know if we have to like say something, right? We just offer and say, please, please accept our humble offering. That's all we say. And then just we put the prasadam and then wait and then just eat it like every day. That's what we're trying at yeah. home. That is, that is a good start. We mm-hmm. love us, uh, the mantras that we do. It's very okay. simple mantras. Uh, I'll, I'll share with uh, everyone. Okay. There is one mantra, right, Prabhu? Patram Pushpam Phalam Toyam. Yeah, that is that is uh, that is a verse from Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, yeah. that is there. Uh, we actually we chant Guru Pranam mantras. Guru Pranam mantras are mainly because uh, we don't consider that we are eligible to offer to God. We approach our Guru to offer, uh, you know, to offer on our behalf. Guru. Mm. Or, Guru would offer to his Guru, his Guru, his Guru, and he ultimately goes to Krishna. We don't approach Krishna directly. We approach through our Guru. So we read Guru Pranam mantras and offer him. Yeah, so, yeah, the main thing is our heart. You know, our heart should be such that we want to take only after giving to God. That way it will avoid, we'll learn that, you know, a lot of simple reactions would go away and our heart gets purified. Okay, so it's six twenty. Uh, Prabhuji, I have a question. Uh, uh, like while chanting the um, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, so sometimes like when we sit for chanting, our mind, as it is the nature of the mind, it will start thinking about various things, right? So is there any way we can control that uh, thoughts and all, or uh, we, do we have to force it? to only concentrate on Krishna or uh, will it come naturally over time? Yeah, uh, all aspects that you said are correct. It will come over time, but we need to make an effort to bring our mind to focus on healing the Holy Name. Okay. Keep doing that. And uh, as you see more, as you hear more, as, you, as time progresses, this is something that is a struggle even for me as of today also. This is not going to be, uh, yeah, it's it's not something that uh, you know, people just want to do. It takes years of practice to get there. And there are certain techniques you can do that would improve this uh, aspect. Uh, we can discuss those. Um, okay. With, you know, focusing on words in the mantra like Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Hare. So focusing on words. Uh, or you know, chanting at different speeds at different times. There are various aspects that would improve. In a, you know. uh, if you could share some some of those uh, techniques, it will be actually useful for us because we are the beginners, right? So. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, for offering a mantra for Prashadam Prabhu, uh, you know, you will explain, but just want to also have one point mm. <clears throat> that many times I feel is whenever we add some mantras, we definitely, I definitely recommend that we need to understand because it should become a spiritual, not the ritual. So, that's very good. You can introduce the main attitude and objective behind each mantra uh, maybe in next class that would be more meaningful to adopt the practice yes thank you Prabhuji anybody else has any questions okay I think a couple of people already left a few people we will end the class here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thanks, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Yeah, Hare Krishna.
Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna.